Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 6, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Malicious PDFs are certainly still quite common and it is important to be able to quickly triage these PDFs to figure out what they are about. Now, Didier posted two diaries with updates to his PDF parser Python script. The script now allows you to extract URLs that may be listed in the PDF. It also allows you to retrieve the text part, which gives you an idea what the content of the PDF is if you would have opened it in a PDF reader. And this weekend, we also had another edition of the Pwn to Own contest, again at PackSec West. Now, in the past, the name Pwn to Own came from the attacker being allowed to essentially keep a device that they're hacking. Since then, some substantial bounties were added to the contest. The final result, well, all devices being offered for this contest have been compromised. The Samsung Galaxy S8 was sort of the lone holdout for a while there, but eventually, yes, it was uh, breached as well. It took a total of 11 different bugs in six different applications to actually be able to execute code on the device, leak sensitive data, and also gain persistence after a reboot. Apple was represented with an iPhone 7, which fell on the first day. The iPhone 8 and 10 wasn't available early enough, I believe, in order to be part of this contest. And OpenSSL released an update on Friday. It fixes one moderate and one low severity vulnerability. The moderate vulnerability essentially leads to a weakening of RSA and DSA private keys. So it would essentially take less resources than it should to brute force these keys. But according to the advisory, it still does take substantial resources that are typically not readily available unless you're up against state-sponsored actors. This vulnerability only affects a certain more recent Intel processor as well as AMD Ryzen processors that are equipped with the BMI1, BMI2 and ADX extensions, which are used by OpenSSL to improve performance. So moderate seems to be the right classification for these vulnerabilities and I don't think you have to rush out any patches here. Now, the next cryptography story here I have affects a standard IEEE P1735 that is often used in the design of systems on a chip. Now, systems on a chip are often used, for example, in mobile devices where you integrate multiple components like wireless radios, CPUs, and the like in one package. Now, to accomplish this, manufacturers purchase designs for these subcomponents and then integrate them. Of course, the designs for these subcomponents are often proprietary, and in order to protect the intellectual property and also make it possible to actually integrate all of these uh, components, the design drawings are transferred in a standard encrypted format, and that's IEEE P1735. Sadly, this standard is badly broken as a recent research paper reveals that puts not only the content of the designs at risk, but also the integrity of the designs. As an end user, you could probably care less if these designs are leaked, uh, but the integrity component here I think is particularly critical because it could allow a third party to modify the designs and the paper here, for example, shows how an AES encryption engine could be modified in malicious ways without the recipient of the design noticing the difference. 
The problem, of course, here is that since this is a standard, it's integrated in a lot of the design tools. So this will be a difficult one to fix in particular, since they essentially have to come up with a new standard to solve this problem. But in the end, uh, this standard is not really used for end user information. It's only used to encrypt the intellectual property that's being used to design these systems. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.